I'm Alec Lace. Welcome to First Class Fatherhood. Welcome, everybody, to episode 501 of the podcast. I am happy, as always, to be here with you. Thank you for stopping by. If this is your first time listening to the podcast, please get over there and bang that subscribe button. You do not want to miss all the action coming your way right here on First Class Fatherhood. All right, dads, we are now making our climb to 1,000 episodes as we just passed episode 500 yesterday with Backstreet Boy Brian Littrell and his son Bailey, who joined me for a very special father-son interview. I've gotten some tremendous feedback already from that one, so if you missed it, please flip it back one episode and take a listen. Today, I've got an awesome guest for you guys. Ross Stripling is a Major League Baseball pitcher who currently pitches for the Toronto Blue Jays. He began his career in 2016 with the LA Dodgers. He pitched in the World Series for them. He made the All-Star team in 2018. Now, Ross is a fairly new father with a four-month-old son, so it's exciting to have him and hear his perspective on the podcast here. Ross was involved in a little bit of a controversy a few weeks ago when he called out one of his teammates, Joe Panic, after a play on the field. Uh, It made headlines. It trended on Twitter. I did this interview with him just about 48 hours after that incident so it was fresh on his mind he addresses his actions during that incident Uh, so we're going to touch on that so much more Ross Striplin will be here with me in just a few minutes so please stick around for the interview and today's interview with Ross Striplin was recorded on video and is available for you guys to watch on my YouTube channel if you'd like to watch today's conversation between the pitcher and myself please subscribe to First Class Fatherhood on YouTube the link is in the description of today's podcast episode All right, and if you guys enjoyed today's interview, please go back and check out some of the other interviews I've done with Major League Baseball dads, including White Sox pitcher Lance Lynn and Hall of Famer Mike Piazza, who joined me not that long ago. Uh, Those and many more are available in the archives of the podcast. Uh, Follow me on Instagram, at Alec underscore Lace, for all the upcoming guest announcements. I've got some great ones coming your way soon. If you're enjoying the podcast, please hit me with that rating or review on iTunes. It always goes a long way to help me out. And please spread the word about the podcast to every father in your neighborhood or in your contact list. And let them know about the show that's here celebrating fatherhood and family life. Fatherhood rocks, family values rule, and every day is Father's Day right here with me. And I'm going to be right back with Ross Striplin. I'm Alec Lace, and you're listening to First Class Fatherhood. All right, Dad, sports stadiums are beginning to fill up once again. Concerts are coming back, and Broadway shows will be here before you know it. It's time to take your kids to an event and start making memories once again. And there's nothing wrong with saving a few bucks while you do it. My partnership with SeatGeek means that you can save $20 off your tickets by using the promo code FIRSTCLASS. That's one word, FIRSTCLASS, at SeatGeek.com or on the SeatGeek app. Let's go, dads. We've been cooped up way too long here. It's time to start enjoying sports and entertainment again the way they were meant to be experienced, live and in person. Visit SeatGeek.com or use the SeatGeek app and enter the promo code FIRSTCLASS. That's one word, FIRSTCLASS at the checkout and save $20 off your tickets. A gift for First Class Fathers from First Class Fatherhood. Uh, Joining me now, First Class Father, Ross Stripling. Welcome to First Class Fatherhood. Hey, man. Thanks for having me. All right, let's start right here. How many kids do you have? How old? I got one kid. His name is Jackson, and he is uh, just about four months old. So just uh, just getting going in the fatherhood thing, man. Yeah, brand new. You still got the you, you still got the price tag on him. How, now, how yeah. did you guys find out what you did? You guys find out what you were having with a gender reveal? Did you wait till the end? How'd you work that out? So my wife always wanted to do gender reveal, right? I mean, that's just this generation. They love it. Put it on social media, and then obviously have fun with it. With the pandemic. Um, at that time, we found out we were living in L.A. because I was playing for the Dodgers at the time. And with COVID, we couldn't get family or anyone out there, you know. So then we tried to maybe set it up through Zoom and, and all that. And it just didn't really work out. So we ended up still making it a surprise from a doctor. But um, we just videoed it ourselves and, like, sent it out to family. So it wasn't as big of a gender reveal as we normally wanted to do. I don't know if she wanted to, like, pop a balloon or throw a baseball to me or whatever it was that she had been dreaming up. Uh, still a surprise. Open it up. It's a boy. Uh, that was a lot of fun. I remember that vividly for sure. Uh, just wasn't as big of an event as I know she wanted it to be. Very cool. You're gonna run it right back and try for the girl, or are you guys all one and done? No, we'll we'll run it back for sure. I think if the second one is a girl, we might call it quits. If we have another boy, my guess is she would want to shoot for a third one to to you know get one of each there. But um, you know, hopefully the American dream, man, one of each, two kids, call it good right there. I'd, I'd be happy. 
Yeah, we were in that boat. We actually had the three boys, then we got the girl on the fourth try. So if nice. not, we were going five, but we got her on the fourth. So That's that awesome. was it for us. Ross, if you could please just take a minute here to hit my listeners with a little bit about your background and what you do. Okay, yeah. So professional baseball player from Texas, live in Houston. I went to Texas A&M, drafted by the Dodgers in 2012, made it up and debuted in 2016, played with them all the way until last year, now with the Blue Jays. Um, we wish we were in Toronto, but we're playing in Buffalo right now because the uh, because of COVID, the border is closed, so we can't get over into Canada to play. So we're playing at a AAA facility uh, and grinding through a season. And it's but it's been a ton of fun. This is a really young, fun team. I've been married to my wife Shelby since 2017, and like I said, our son Jackson is four months old. Yeah, very cool. And I just recently had Mike Piazza on the podcast. He talked about having kids late in his uh, baseball career. I think he was about 38 or so, wow. uh, right right towards the end of his career. You're, you're doing it right now. What have been so far the challenges for you being a new dad while competing at such a high level in Major League Baseball? Well, man, what a question. I could go on that for 30 minutes, I feel like. You know, it. it um, I've seen teammates do it. Clayton Kershaw is one in Los Angeles who has three kids who – is such a family-oriented person, and I've been able to learn a lot from him, how he has juggled being a father and also arguably being the best left-handed pitcher that's ever played our game, um, and just how he does it, you know, so I, I've been able to experience it through other teammates and kind of knew what was coming my way, but then for the third time in this podcast, I've already mentioned the pandemic, you know, so I I had to stay back. Our son was going to be born at the very start of spring training. Normally, I could have gone to spring training, and when my wife was going to be induced or going to labor, I could just fly home and go into the room. Well, they weren't going to let me do that, so I had to stay home. I was late to spring training. He was also born in a like a generational snowstorm in Houston, which does not happen. It does not snow in Houston. We had no water, no power for three days leading up to his birth. Just a crazy story. Um, and and anyways, end up everything goes totally fine, and he's you know. Our son, newborn for three days, and I have to leave. I have to go to spring training. I'm just gone and leave my you know, poor wife behind, who's a mother for the first time. And luckily, we have awesome support system. Her parents, my parents, that were able to help. But you know, I leave. I'm in Florida. They're home in Houston. We're FaceTiming. And Jackson, our son, has to get on a flight at about 10 days old and fly to Florida. And then uh, spring training finishes, and we're starting to travel and play. And so I'm, I'm traveling around the country playing baseball. Well, now we have to move to Buffalo. So Jackson, at four months old, has already been on eight flights. Um, and my wife has st- not none with me, all with my wife. You know, my wife's going through security, pushing him in the stroller, doing all that stuff that, you know, moms do. They're superheroes, man. So it's it's just been crazy. I mean, in four months, he's been on eight flights. He's been in multiple cities. But he's a happy, healthy little guy, and my wife's killing it. So it's, you know, I really can't stress enough how crazy it is and how much, as, as the men – part of the baseball lifestyle we rely on the wives and the mothers to to take care of of basically everything at home because it's just so much workload on them during the season when we just can't be there yeah wow we we'll talk about like an introduction by fire here relocating pandemic all this going on now uh, you mentioned it there too a couple of times with the pandemic now having your first child during this what were, were you able to go to all the appointments i know it's usually a, especially with the first one you're usually uh, at your wife's appointments you know every one that she has were you able to go into the room for all the appointments or it was only selected few you were allowed to do yeah i can only go for ultrasounds i could only go when when we had a chance to see jackson through an ultrasound uh I think that was maybe only three appointments. They and it was also varied by city. At the time, we were we were in Los Angeles when we found out she was pregnant. California obviously had much stricter rules. I don't think I was allowed to go in California at all once we got home to Houston. Um, the rules had lightened up a little bit on what they were allowing for husbands. I mean, for a while it was looking like I may not even be in the room. My wife was going to have to deliver in a mask, and I wasn't even going to be in the room. And and luckily Texas, you know, lightened up those those. Um, rules i guess and and anyways yeah only only ultrasound so about uh maybe a little less than half the appointments yeah and, and you know i i ross i've had a lot of the uh, nfl players on here ask them about how the nfl is when they have young kids and, and they all seem to be very uh pleased with the way the nfl handles them when they have new kids and the way that they uh make all their accommodations for them how has major league baseball been so far for you and your teammates that have kids do they have certain things at the ballpark for the kids for the families do they make it very family oriented in the major leagues well, I'll tell you what, uh, the answer is yes, but the craziest part about it is the, uh, the paternity leave is only three days, right? So a lot of, a lot of us try and, and set up inductions so that we can plan on being there because you, you only get three days. So you want to like set it up to where maybe you play a day game and then you can fly out that night 
and then you get the next three days. Hopefully, maybe have have your you know child that next day, so you get two days at home, and then and then you have to come back. I mean, literally three days, man. It's crazy, but yes, to answer your question, I mean, there's there's family rooms, there's suites at the stadiums, there's uh, awesome amenities that the teams usually do for families, and and also just the support system of the wives is so important. You know, uh, I remember in, in Los Angeles, we had eight of us get married in the same off season. So we had eight wives um, starting to travel with their husbands and move around the country with us. And, and for them to be in that together was huge. And now a lot of those women are starting to have children as well. So they really rely on each other, which is, um, you know, such a big deal to have that network. But, yeah, to, to answer your question, the team also does plenty. Yeah, very cool. And then obviously, Ross, you were trending on Twitter here the other day. And I, I, I seen that going on. I said, man, Ross is trending. I'm doing an interview with him coming up. What's obviously trending not for the right reasons, unfortunately. Yeah. Now, one of the things, you know, as a parent, obviously your, your son's very young. But uh, one of the things is they look up to us. They're going to mimic what we do, our actions, our behaviors. Walk me through this incident here uh, with Joe. Uh, what, 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 was, what was going on in your mind? I know that you, I, th- I think the way you handled it afterwards was, was, was very professional and, and very respectful. So walk me through this whole incident and the aftermath that happened. Sure. Um, you know, the worst thing you ever want to do is show up a teammate in, in front of when you know we're, gonna, we're on cameras, it's going to show up and you basically look at a teammate and, and you know, make him feel bad and, and, and put it on him. And what happened was Giancarlo Stanton hit a slow roller to Joe Panic playing third base. Giancarlo was not running hard. So I knew that Joe had a ton of time. So I'm screaming at Joe, you got time, you got time. Well, Joe tries to make a barehanded play and throw it. And Giancarlo ends up safe on first base. And what that was was a culmination of a lot of frustration and anger from earlier in the season to now where I'm pitching better and, and have – this is the sixth inning that like I feel like I'm about to get out of this outing and give our team a chance to win and the outing before in Fenway against the Red Sox totally got away from me when I was one pitch away so just like all these emotions and man I totally I took it out on Joe I like slam on the ground I look at him I go palms up like man he wasn't running what are you doing like I just I show him up and he's a veteran he's got gold gloves he's won world series like it's just not what you do as a teammate uh, in real time, I knew it was bad, but once I got in the locker room, my outing was over, and I saw the replay of it. Uh, it was awful, man. It was the most disrespectful thing I could have done to him in, in, as a teammate. It's just the worst thing you can do. So I, I apologize to him individually. I apologize to the team as a whole. I apologize on Twitter. I apologize to the media after the game. It's just it, you can't do it. And like you said, you set uh, an example for your children. My son obviously doesn't know that yet, but one day he might see that video and, and say, what were you doing, Dad? And I got to you know tell him exactly what I just told you, man. It was frustration. And I took it out in the wrong area. I took it out on a teammate. You never do that. But what you do is you apologize afterwards. You take it head on. That's what a man does. And, um, you know, it, it hasn't blown over quite yet. It's only been 24 hours. But I feel like that I was able to get ahead of it and apologize like that. It's already way better than what it would have been if I just left it alone. Yeah, I, I agree. And, and Ross, obviously, it's, it's it's easy to be the dad or the hero when things are going right. I think it's in these moments where we do have these setbacks or these failures that truly show uh, our character and a testament to our character. And I think, like I said, the way you handled it afterwards was class. And, and I think he will, as he looks back at that, as he gets older, he will see the way that you responded to. So um, I, I think it ended up being a learning lesson for you and will be, you know, a, 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 an inside look to you as your son gets older. Now, bringing it back to you as a dad here now, uh, with the young son, what does the bedtime routine look like for you? Are you a lullaby guy here? Are you a storyteller? <laughs> You're reading the books. What's bedtime look like for you so far? Man, bedtime is great when I get to be there. You know, a lot of times we play a seven o'clock game. I'm not getting home till 11. So my wife handles bedtime quite a bit. I'm, I'm more on wake up duty, which I enjoy just as much. But when I'm there for bedtime, um, my wife has a, a routine that she likes to do with them, which is, you know, putting on the lotions and, and getting the boogers out of his nose, all the stuff you got to do for the newborns. Right. And then uh, we've got the sound machine. I think it's called a hatch sound machine, man. That thing is awesome. It's got like 10 different modes. And we found that he likes the woods version, you know, where it sounds like kind of like crickets are chirping and trees are blowing. And he loves that one. And, and we just, um, man, we just kind of hold him and rock him and, and tell him we love him and just say, man, good night. And he's such a good sleeper, man. It takes him just a couple minutes. He goes right to sleep. And then we put him in the bassinet. He's, he's still in a bassinet right now, you know, coming up on four months. We don't, we don't know what we're doing with the crib and stuff yet. We've bounced around so much. We don't even have a crib in some of the places we live. So right now he's just kind of sleeping next to the bed. Um, but man, it's great. You know, you get to be there, say good night. And then you're the first thing he sees in the morning too. When, when you get to be there for, for me, when I get to be there for bedtime and waking him up, it's just the best. 
Yeah, and one of the cool things, as you mentioned before, FaceTime. I mean, that's something that wasn't always available, and now it's so readily available that I think it's a beautiful thing, especially a lot of the guys in the military that, that are serving. They have the opportunity to FaceTime in and get it, get to take part in some of these things that they're missing out on, where otherwise you never even had a clue what was going on. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I, I think that's a pretty cool part of it. And let me ask you now, Ross, about your podcast here, the Big Swing Podcast. What was the genesis of that, and um, what can the listeners expect to hear when they tune in? Yeah, so that's a, a podcast I've been doing for over two years now with my buddy back home in Houston. His name's Cooper. He's the co-host. And we just kind of talk about everything, man. I tell you what, I have a really cool network of, of former teammates and current teammates and guys you meet around baseball. And to be able to get them in there and have just like a 15, 20-minute conversation where they open up more than what you would see on the post-game interview, right? Where they say things like, oh, you know, God willing, we took it one pitch at a time. Like those kind of like cliche answers. This is more of you know, an open podcast type conversation with with guys like Clayton Kershaw and, and um, you know, Max Muncy, Justin Turner, guys from my Los Angeles days. And now on the Blue Jays, Bo Bichette, Kevin Biggio, like the young stars coming up in the game. So it's just it's been a lot of fun. Um, we do it once a week. They come out on Wednesday. It's called The Big Swing. We're liable to talk about anything. It's definitely baseball focused, but we will talk about the NBA playoffs. We'll talk about the NFL. We'll, we'll just kind of it's just kind of two guys kicking back, having a good time. We've done over, I guess, 120 episodes now, man. So we, we push them out every week, and it's a lot of fun. Yeah, very cool. I'm going to drop a link in the description of this podcast episode to that podcast so my listeners can get over there and check it out. And then, obviously, baseball is bigger and better than I think ever before. I mean, young kids are playing it the 365 days a year now with travel baseball. Uh, back in the day, it was like Little League, and then that was the end of it. So what kind of advice do you have, especially for the young pitchers out there, parents that have kids that are playing baseball, hoping to go next level, maybe into college, maybe to the big leagues? What kind of advice could you give to the parents on how to steer those kids? Man, good question. You know, you get asked that all the time, man. I was a weird story. I didn't pitch until I was 18 years old, you know, versus now there's kids that know their spin rate at 10 years old. <laughs> and, you know, and it's just the game has gone very analytical and, and people get specialized at a young age. You know, I played everything under the sun. I played football, basketball, and baseball in high school and just kind of found my niche in baseball as a pitcher and walked on in college. You know, I wasn't going to the summer camps to get recruited and going on visits and stuff like that. So my story is a little weird. So because of that, I like to say, Tell them to do everything and tell them to have fun and tell them to, you know, if they want to play lacrosse or tennis or golf or whatever, and also baseball, that's great. You know, everything under the sun and let them experience it. Um, you know, it's specifically to baseball. I think it's have fun and understand that, um, man, everyone kind of progresses at different levels, right? Like everyone wants to throw hard at, at 13, 14 years old. People already probably want to start like throwing 83, 84, 85 miles an hour because velocity plays in the game now. And, and um, you know, strictly speaking as a pitcher, I just, I don't want you to get caught up into that and put too much pressure and stress on yourself. The game, it's a game. You're supposed to go out, have fun. And I think as long as your kid's having, having fun and doing that, man, you, you got a chance for him to move on to the next level. And, and there's tons of places to play with junior college, division one, whatever it is. So as long as you're having fun, getting better and feel like you're working towards something, set goals and work towards it, you got a chance to move on. Yeah, well said, Ross. And then, what do you, just because it's uh, brand new here, what do you what do you think about these Major League Baseball, the new rules that they implemented here with the seventh inning doubleheader, the man on second base, and the extra innings? What, what's your opinion here on the uh, on the new rules? I thought you were going to ask me about the sticky substance stuff for sure. That's uh, <laughs> this is much light lighter than that one. You know what? Um, I think it's been good in a pandemic. You know, with um, I, it'll be interesting to see what sticks moving forward I, I do like the seven inning no hitters I mean sorry the seven inning double headers um you know I think when you're staring 18 innings down on a double header that's a lot but 14 actually is is pretty doable uh the man on second and extra innings I think is a little gimmicky I wish we could maybe just play like a clean 10th inning and then if you're still tied just call it a tie we play 162 games just call it a tie there's a tie in other sports um you know, I, I, but those 16 inning games can just get outrageous. So I do think we need to address the extra innings, but I just don't know if starting with a man on second is the way to do it. Yeah, well said. Now, now becoming a dad here and a young parent, hopefully you know, uh, planning a, a bigger family here. Has that put a, a number on retirement for you? Ha, has this changed uh, your, your perspective on your playing career? And do you have any kind of plans that you're looking for so far beyond your playing career? Great question. Um, you know what? I, I, would say no as of now as far as putting a limit on on uh, my career and when I might retire. I tell you what, man, every time you miss 
a bedtime or something that he does that's new. You know, he's not crawling and that kind of stuff yet. But if I'm not there the first time he crawls, I mean, that's going to be gut wrenching, right? Like hopefully my wife catches it on video so I can at least see it through that. You know, when you miss things like that, it's tough and you realize how how gone you are and how often it is and, and how much pressure you put on your wife and, and the stuff that you missed, you know? So now if you compound that with another child or two, I mean, that's just going to get harder and harder. So I certainly understand that. But at the end of the day, you know, this baseball window is such a short, significant part of the life where we have a chance to take care of the family moving forward and, and take pressure off us later in life, you know? So you got to take advantage of it and sacrifice some things at times. And as far as after baseball, the podcast was started to potentially pursue a media slash broadcasting career. And if uh, if I want to go down that outlet, I think I would enjoy it a lot. I also do some finance things on the side. I'm actually a licensed stockbroker of my series seven and 66, which makes me licensed to be able to uh, get clients, solicit them advice and manage their money. So I'm also very passionate about that. I studied it in college. So um, probably one of those avenues, but maybe just be a dad for a couple of years if I'm able to you know, finish my career strong and then uh, see where see where my passions lead. Yeah, good stuff, Ross. And then the last thing I want to hit you with here, I love to ask all the dads that I get on the podcast here. I'm curious to hear, hear your thoughts on this. What kind of advice do you have for that new dad or for that about to be father who's out there listening? Oh, man, great question. Uh, one of my teammates named uh, Travis Bergen, who's about to have a kid any day and his first kid, and he's been asking me, picking my brain. And, and you know, the, the what I've been telling him is, you know, you can't really be prepared for it, but at the same time, you're going to know exactly what to do. It's just weird. I don't, you know, obviously mothers, their DNA, they're, they're birthing the child. That's a totally different, but something in us too, where we just go into like help mode and we are calm and, and, you know, at least most of us, I hope are, are calm and we're in there and we're, and we're helping and, and, you know, just trust that that's going to come out of you. And also, I mean, the classic one is just listen to whatever she says, right? I mean, do whatever she says, just be there to support her, man. Those first couple of weeks are all about mom. You know, she's learning to breastfeed. The schedule's so tough on her wake up with her, just talk to her, be there for her, you know, try not to just sleep through every night feed, be up, up with her and, and, and communicate with her and, and, you know, be there to support her, I think is a big one because it's just so tough on them those first couple of weeks, even first couple of months, right? So, um, man, it's just all about her and understanding that what are, you're just there to help. And that's kind of what I've been telling them. Yeah, very well said. I love the message. It's been a lot of fun for me. I got to say, Ross Stripling, you're a first class father all the way. And thank you so much for giving me a few minutes of your time here on First Class Fatherhood. Alec, thanks, man. This was a lot of fun. Back to wrap things up here on First Class Fatherhood. I got to give a special thank you once again to Ross Stripling for giving me a few minutes of his time here. It was so cool. Please hit me up on Twitter, guys, or drop me that DM on Instagram. Let me know what you thought about today's episode. I thought that Ross's comments, I thought he handled the whole incident with class. He seemed like he really, really recognized that he made a mistake there. Uh, so I like what he had to say. Let me know your thoughts about it. Make sure you follow me on Instagram at Alec underscore Lace for all the upcoming guest announcements. I got some great ones coming your way soon. Uh, please hit me with a rating or review on iTunes. That always goes a long way to help me out. That's all I got for you guys today. I'm Alec Lace. Thank you for listening to First Class Fatherhood. And please remember, guys, we are not babysitters. We are fathers. And we're not just fathers. We are first class fathers. Tall as a tree, I saw feeling so.